All right, as you're working through uh, this particular type of problem, again, you convert it into a multiplication by inverting multiplying and factor everything all at once. So uh, if I'm looking at uh, this setup, uh, the way that I would look at it, I'm going to factor my uh, numerator and denominator here. Okay, so um, again, I can rewrite the middle term or uh, use trial and error. Okay, the fact that um, if you anticipate 6 and 2, there's no way that they have a difference by themselves of a negative 1. So you're most likely going to use factors of 3x and 2x. So I am going to just do trial and error here. Okay, and so we want our uh, the outer plus inner product to have an overall sum of negative 1. So again, you can test the different variations, but the signs have to be opposites. If I take my outer plus 3x and my inner minus 4x, that gives me my total sum of minus 1x. Again, you may have to, to take uh, several tries to get that, okay, but you can work through that material. Okay, for the 12x squared plus 5x minus 2, again, same thing. You can either rewrite the middle term or use trial and error. Okay, on this one, I'll rewrite the middle term just so there's a little of each, each method in there. So I'm going to do all my work down here on, on the left. So if I take my leading coefficient times my constant, I get a negative 24. Are there two factors of negative 24 whose sum is a positive 5? Plus 8 and minus 3, right? So I'm going to rewrite my middle term in those terms. Drop my first and last term down and factor by grouping. So I'm going to take a 3x out, leaving 4x minus 1. Take out a 2, leaving a 4x minus 1. So here's my... Uh, common binomial factor, 4x minus 1. My remaining factors of 3x and plus 2 are going to form the terms of my remaining factor. Okay, now I'm going to turn this into a multiplication. So my numerator gets moved to the denominator. We have the difference of squares. So I'm going to factor that into the difference or the sum times the difference of the terms being squared, which are 2x and 1. So the sum times the difference. And then finally in my denominator here, um, I want uh, the uh, factors, if we take uh, 8 times 1, are there two factors of 8 whose sum is a negative 6, a negative 4, and a negative 2. And so when I look at that, again, I can either rewrite the middle term. So if I do that, rewrite the middle term down here, or you can use trial and error. And again, I'm going to use trial and error since... 8 and 1 don't have a difference of 6. That means my uh, first terms will be 4x and 2x. My product has to be a positive 1, so I know the only things I can have here are plus 1 or negative 1. Well, since the pr product is positive and the sum is negative, I know each of these is going to be a negative. So I can check it. My outer plus inner uh, products do have a sum of negative 6x, so that's consistent. All right, once I get everything set up, I can now go through and uh, look to simplify anything that I can. So as I go through here, my 2x plus 1s cancel, my 4x minus 1s cancel, my 2x minus 1s cancel. And so all I'm left with is 3x minus 2 over 3x plus 2. Okay, since I had factors that got removed from the denominator, I need to identify those domain restrictions. So I also know x cannot equal uh, positive 1 4. Here, this one doesn't have, you don't have to worry about it. It's uh, represented in the simplified form. So I, I'm looking at 1 4, negative 1 half, and positive 1 half. So if I write it in order, I get my solution. And now, remember, you do have to go back up, and you since we're using a division problem, we have to consider all of these factors, which are right here. When they, you invert them, you have to account for the domain restrictions of those. None of, neither of these can be zeros. Well, they both wound up getting canceled out, so they're accounted for in my domain restrictions already.